Well, at least four tornadoes hit Michigan on this day back in 2014. One of those was an EF1 with top winds of 110 miles per hour. It caused significant damage to the Kentwood and Wyoming areas and also injured six people. It touched down in Byron Center and was on the ground for six miles. Yeah, Kevin Craig standing by right now. Sunday night into Monday morning, you said, Kev, is that what it was? Yeah, it was. I remember that. I think I was on the air on that Sunday night. And then, of course, our old uh, news anchor, Christian Frank, and I and all our crew basically were out there the next day doing the 5 and 6 o'clock news live from there. And uh, they have recovered. There's some great people out there. I remember I was just telling you guys in the studio here before we came back from break that uh, we were invited to a barbecue afterwards. And, uh, uh, you know, I had a couple of cool drinks and then came back to the station did the 10 and 11 o'clock news there as well so hopefully everything is in good shape out there in Wyoming and Kentwood for you folks right now but we're all sharing in the heat uh, good afternoon everybody as we look out over Muskegon here you can see uh, mostly sunny skies for the most part a calm lake as well we've had waves about zero to one foot and we'll have waves tomorrow about one foot or less so that's a good place to be but the heat wave for us will continue over the next few days heat wave being defined as 90 degrees or more for a three-day period or more and this is day number, this will be number five for us because we've already hit 90. So it'll be five in a row for Grand Rapids. You folks in Muskegon will tie the record. The record was eight days straight set back in, I think, 1947. And you should have tied that today if you hit 90. I've seen 88, 89 in Muskegon. I haven't officially seen the 90. So more on that uh, when the numbers come out a little bit later this evening. A small shower and thunderstorm chance here over the next few days, but they are some uh, of, of, of chance. It's just very small. Uh, we'll have a better chances we get into Thursday and Friday, I think, and then cooler and maybe temperatures dropping back into the 80s by the time we get into the weekend. Nothing on our Doppler radar right now. That doesn't mean that something can't crop up here and fire maybe along and east of US 131. That's what's been happening the last few days. These showers and thunderstorms, you can see I've got the arrows on these. They're not really coming our way. They might scrape the northwestern portion of Ionia County. Excuse me, let me retract that. The northwestern portion of Oceana County, maybe, but they even look like they may miss that. But if these continue to propagate or grow down to the south and west, they could maybe hit more of Oceana County or Muskegon County. We'll keep an eye on that over the next few hours. But it looks like most of those will miss us. And again, something could crop up that's not on radar right now. That's something else that we're watching. Well, we're not looking for anything severe, but something isolated could crop up. And that has been the situation over the last few days. Dew point temperatures are in the 50s down here. Kalamazoo, Battle Creek, Three Rivers, cold water. That's a dry air mass. Uh, and up here in uh, our northern counties, everybody else in the mid 60s or so. So there is a little bit of humidity out there, but we typically over the last uh, several days of this heat wave haven't seen the tropical moisture laden air mass that we have in previous uh, previous times. So it's been generally somewhat of a dry heat. Current temperatures have us in the 80s at the lakeshore there, 89 in Muskegon. Again, if you folks hit 90 today, you will tie the all time record set back in 1947 for the most consecutive days of a heat wave. So uh, we'll see where we'll be with that as those numbers come out. But as we pull out to a wider perspective, there's still lots of heat out there to our south and west, and we'll continue to tap that air mass here over the next uh, few days. You can see the way these showers and thunderstorms will be firing off to our north and west. There is a weak cool front that's going to slide in here tomorrow. I'll show you that momentarily. That could trigger a few showers or some thunder showers, but I don't expect anything widespread with that. 67 for the low tonight, mostly clear and warm. We'll have a southwest wind that will be light. As we look at the map, this is at 9 p.m. Again, something could crop up over the next couple of hours. Otherwise, we're dry. We're mostly clear overnight. Here comes the cold front a little bit closer. We may see a few more clouds tomorrow because of this weak cool front coming in here. There's really no cooler air behind it. That may trigger another shower or thunder shower tomorrow. As we go Tuesday night into Wednesday, calm conditions, quiet conditions there. But as we go into the day on Wednesday, that warm front draws a little bit closer. This model, I think, is a little overdone with shower and thunderstorm activity for Wednesday. But as we go into Thursday and Friday, that becomes a little more likely. So we're 92 tomorrow. Maybe a scattered shower or storm 93 on Wednesday 94 looks to be our warmest day out of the bunch there an isolated PM shower or thunderstorm they become a little more likely on Friday with highs around 90 and then we drop the temperatures back into the mid 80s for Saturday Sunday and Monday so if you don't like the heat I know it's not a big change but it is something to look forward to as we gravitate towards the weekend and those temperatures cool off just a bit Derek Janice